So um, I have a few minutes remaining. Let me give you a more concrete example. Um, I guess I'm using the word of concrete in the sense that you can actually look at the numbers. Um, I want to use this as a concrete example. So, you know, uh, infinite square, well, it's, um, um, it's I mean, you know, it's a made up example. You don't really have infinite square walls in real life. But it, uh, it gives us very nice uh, solutions. For one, we already know what these away functions are, the time independent solutions. We looked at this last time. These are, you know, a sine of um, pi x over lam l, a sine of 2 pi x over l, and this is a sine of, am I doing this right? I feel like I'm missing something. Well, I'm doing it right, right? Yeah, you know, when x is equal to l, this is pi. When x is equal to l, this is 2 pi. Okay, I think I'm fine. Sine of 3 pi x over l, and so on. Now, one could say this. Um, what would you say is the maximum position uncertainty for particles in this square well? What is, uh, you know, um, just intuitively speaking, knowing what you know about this setup, what would you say is the maximum possible uncertainty in position? L. L? Right? Yeah, particle is confined within this range. So this would, I mean, the actual uncertainty, the way we define it here, could be smaller than L, but it's at least smaller than L. It's never going to be bigger than L. Right? Because you confine the particle here. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm, this, is the, so, uh, what, this is what I'm saying. If I actually measure the, so maximum, yeah, maximum, so if I measure, measure the actual uncertainty, the most it can be is L. Good? All right. Now, this is something that I'm hoping causes a little bit of a puzzlement. When you look at the solutions, you know, look at this one, for example, superficially, does it look like superficially that your wavelength is exactly L? Which means, um, so delta lambda equal to zero, which would mean that your momentum is exactly uh, H over lambda, so H over L, and which would also mean that your uncertainty in momentum is exactly zero. That would be inconsistent with this, right? Because then, um, the, you know, if this uh, uncertainty principle is correct, uncertainty principle is claiming that delta x times delta p is gr greater than approximately h. And here, I seem to have an example where 0 times a finite number is 0. So what am I missing? Energy doesn't enter here. I'm, I've picked this exact uh, state. So it has some finite energy level, but I don't have to, and energy doesn't have to enter any calculation anywhere. I'm missing something here. What am I missing? What would you say the average velocity of this particle is? Note carefully how I said the velocity, not speed. Uh, zero. It, it, so standing wave, is it going anywhere? Not on average. So the average velocity would be zero. So that means average momentum must be zero. Yeah, that's not consistent with this. So what am I skipping out here? I'm kind of running out of time, so let me write it out. Right? Whatever wave is making up this, some portion is moving to the right, some portion is moving to left. So the momentum value is plus minus h over l. And if you're looking at energy level, you would never see it because you're squaring the value of momentum. For kinetic energy, you don't care about the direction, only the speed matters. So here, once you recognize this, 
you could say, oh, my uncertainty momentum, that is not, um, that is not zero. That is actually uncertainty that's given by, you know, if I'm plotting out momentum, it kind of looks like this. At h over l, I have this sharp peak. And at minus h over l, I have another sharp peak here. So who knows what the exact uh, uncertainty calculated exactly is. But let's say that this uncertainty is at least h over l, or something on that magnitude. Then you see now it's uh, all consistent. The uncertainty momentum that's about h over l, give or take factor of 10. Uncertainty in position is comparable to l. Give, once again, give or, give or take an order of magnitude. And that is um, approximately equal to or greater than h. Yeah. So, um, so this is one concrete example where you can actually see that the uncertainty principle, and it's the approximate version, is consistent with the actual uncertainties you would calculate based on what you know about this. And there are more mathematically sophisticated way to calculate all this, and I really do want to cover it because it's fun. It only takes a little bit of calculus and not much linear algebra. Um, let me do that after your exam too.